Hi everyone, it is Monday and oops, a bit of dirt on there. Um, we have a planner page to do. Now this is from Secret Garden, it's a really lovely page and I thought I would have a little experiment with some of the flowers and things on this page. Um, I have got, whoops, my new um, pastel tint pencils um, and I thought I would use them in combination with the Castle Arts Gold to sort of show you how you can use a pastel together with a, a sort of more primary or darker colour to sort of shade and tone and things like that. Um, I think they will work well together. Um, you don't have to use these brands. You don't have to, if you don't have the gold, you could probably use the soft touch. I don't see why not. I'm sure these would work with any brand of pencil, but I just wanted to experiment. So I'm just gonna open up my tins and uh, oops, um, get them um, opened up and uh, we can then get started. I, uh, I have my swatch chart from the 72 here which will help me. I'm going to swatch them again in my new swatch book um, in a decent order at some point. I haven't um, swatched the pastels yet. Um, it's only my second time of using them, Ooh. but um, I'm sure Ooh. they don't want to come out of the box, but I'm sure um, it'll all work out well. I'm going to come in close and we're just going to do some of the flowers first, I think, and uh, see how we go really. But we're going to start with a pastel shade and then we're going to use a slightly darker tone to add some shadow, I thought. Now, are we wonky are we in focus i think we're okay to go let's do the center of the flower first let's just use a yellow so i am thinking this yellow here you can't see the name well you might be able to just about make it out um it's a saffron so i was just checking my lamp was on it is so it's the saffron yellow and i'm just going to do it fairly gently in the center we don't want to layer it down too hard so it burnishes into the paper before we've even added our next color so there is our saffron yellow and then I'm going to go into the gold set and find what I think might work well with it. And this is the golden yellow. Okay, so I'm going to go around the edge of here with the golden yellow and hope that we can get it to um, work on top and show up. Having not practiced this before, May not have been such a wise idea but actually it's going to work this is still quite a pale yellow color anyway so uh, i've just looked at it actually on my swatch chart i probably should have chosen a slightly darker one but anyway we'll leave that there for that one hopefully you can see the difference between the colors and we'll do these little um seeds in a, in a darker color i think actually there is a nice color in the um the inca gold is quite dark we'll just use that we don't, I don't think we really need a secondary colour with this one. So I'm going to try and make the, excuse me, the edges of each seed slightly darker. They're quite small. It's a little bit tricky to do. And you could put a dot of white pen in the middle if you wanted to. So I haven't, as I said, I haven't swatched these yet. I've got, I was gifted the Ruby Charms Colours um, swatch book, which is amazing. Now, I hate swatching. I find it dull, but really, really valuable and useful. So what I've decided to do is work through my swatch book, which I did want. It's on my wish list um, and I'm really grateful and I do like it and I want it. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Um, we're going to use this really pretty pink for all the petals. I'm going to go over them in all a light layer. And then I'll talk you through um, our other colours. So it's, but what I've decided is rather than going at it all at once, which I think would just drive me crazy, I'm going to do one set of pencils at a time and do the picture on the page as well. Because if you've seen, you may have seen my um, flip through, I think it, is it would have come out by now. Hmm, I think so. Um, on each, most pages, there's a picture. So I started last night and I did the Stedler Ergosoft set. I thought I'd start with a smallish set, it's a 36 set, so it, it was fairly straightforward for me. And it was quite fun, actually. And there was a picture of a beetle on the, on the page above. 
so I coloured that in with the Stedler pencils. I thought if I colour the picture on the page with those pencils, it would all sort of tie up. So that's what I did. So that was good fun. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. And I will show you as I go. And when I do my um, um, pages are coloured in, whatever month it might be. So when I do the June ones, I will show you the pages that I've done from that book. And you can have a look and uh, see the swatches and, and see the pictures I thought might be fun to show you. Um, if it's just a page that I've swatched and there wasn't a picture on it, it might not be very exciting. <laughs> Here's a page of swatches, but uh, if I have done a picture as well, I'll show you that. I thought it might be, uh, might be fun. Okay, so I've done a very basic layer and I'm going to take a darker pink from my gold set um, I'm going to look on my swatch chart actually and see, oh, sorry, we're a bit zoomed in aren't we? Um, I shall look, you can believe me that I pick an azalea pink, seems to me to be a good uh, match. Okay, you can see it's a lot darker but I think it's the same sort of tone of pink. Um, I'll show you the swatch and why I picked it. So there is the azalea pink swatch compared to that pink. Um, I think it's, it's rather than being a more orangey pink or a more purpley pink or a reddy colour, it is, seems to me to just be the right colour. Um, so we're going to go in here and just fade towards the end of each petal. And I'm going to go back over with the pastel pink after. I'll show you what I intend to do. So I hope everyone's well today, um, Monday morning, always a bit of a stressy day for some, although my husband has to get stressed on a Sunday rather than a Monday um, before work, which is a shame, I have talked to him about it, but he does, once he's there he really enjoys his job, he works with some great people, I mean not everyone's amazing, but obviously you get that everywhere, not all people, you don't get on with, we don't get on with everybody, but um, um that's uh, he what he finds is um if the people around him are talking about things which he doesn't like some of them talk about um things in the news that are a bit negative or politics he's not keen on really listening to people's i think he he's interested in political discussions and debates that we have within the family um we're all willing to listen to each other whereas some people get quite animated and argumentative should we say opinionated and that he isn't keen on but he can put on some headphones and listen to music while he's working they're allowed to do that so he will do that what i would really like on this picture is just a little bit of pink here so i'm going to just put try and put a delicate line i probably should sharpen my pencil but i'm going to just try it without because i'm lazy but um, yeah, so once he gets to work, he does enjoy. And he came home yesterday saying he had a really productive day and he felt really, you know, it makes you feel good. Okay, so we're going to go back to our fox glove. Sorry it's so pale. It's just they've printed, they've chosen to print white on the barrels and uh, it's a little bit pale, but uh, um, some of them don't show up at all. I can't even read them um, myself let alone on a screen but uh, so I'm just over colouring these again just to blend those colours together I think they go really well and look how seamlessly they just blend together I think it's really nice I mean obviously um, you might not want um, your flower just one colour but I think just to start with with my little experiment it's quite nice to try and keep similar colours together so we can uh, make it's easier to choose um, what we're doing. I feel like it's uh, it's interesting because I watched a video last night's colour with Claire, um, and she was comparing the Castle Arts Gold to the Soft Touch, and basically um, she was saying one's wax and one's oil, and um, that sort of thing. And I do feel a difference with the core. Um, I feel like these, um, the gold and the pastel ones, feel like they're the same type of core. And to me they feel softer like prismas, 
whereas to me the soft touch despite being called soft touch feel softer in a sort of chalky way if you know what I mean slightly harder more like a pastel pencil now we've done that now I still feel like under each of these little petals I want to go slightly darker I'm going to have a look on my swatch chart and see if I've got a darker pink which isn't too far away and I don't really um what should we do so you could put a bit of black in there for shadow but that's a bit extreme when we're trying to do a sort of pastel-y thing so uh and I'm thinking purple's going to be a bit too much maybe that french rose might just about work let's have a look at it um is that it i've got to find it now there we go so this is french rose and you can see it's quite a lot darker i'm going to sharpen it and i really just want a little line of it now one thing i find with these um gold they sharpen much better um see i'm just going to put a line to try and make a little shadow um they um the wood seems better quality. I find in the soft touch it seems inconsistent. Some of the wood is as good as this but some of it is quite splintery so it's quite interesting and I find it doesn't feel smooth in my sharpener as say like this one does so it's quite interesting. There we go. I'm going to leave that one there but we do have our stem and leaves to do so we'll move on to those. Now I usually like, I think it would be best to do the stem in a darker colour and the leaf itself, maybe the outline in the darker colour and the inside in a pastel. So I'm going to choose my pastel colour first. Um, <laughs> we've got, I, having not swatched them, I'm just going to have to sort of guess. There's quite a lot of grey greens I found when I was um, looking at them, which I found quite interesting. This is called Daylily. We'll try this one. I've just picked it sort of randomly and I'm going to pop it in here and uh, I probably won't do every leaf on this plant right now because it's uh, they'll all be the same but we'll see how we go so there is our daylily you can see it's quite a grey green I'm going to try and build the layers up a little bit down here so it looks a little bit darker I'm just trying to even it out a bit um, so we need one from our um, other set that's similar I'm going to zoom out just so that you can see my swatch chart so I can talk you through my process so I'm looking for greens we've got a few here so these are very minty or very bluey so those aren't going to work now these may be options they're not grey greens but they're nearer than the mint we go over here this is a green but it's blue um, these are more olivey yellowy greens this one looks like it might be a match it looks a bit more um a bit more like it to me maybe that one's uh, that's too blue that's that's quite gray as well i'm thinking that one or the hookers maybe mm, we'll go for this one terra verde okay and we'll try that so i will grab that one if i can find it um oh here it is sorry excuse my arm across the picture i've got pencil you can imagine i've got pencil tins all over the place it's a right mess so here's the terra verde and um, it needs a good sharpen and we'll um, have a go and you can see what you think you might think that's too dark but we have to um oh the um it's just broken in my sharpener uh, bear with me i just got to get the broken lead out of my sharpener I usually use a little Norris pencil for that. Sorry for the bang. Um, because uh, I don't want to poke a, a colouring pencil into my sharpener. My All my sharpener is getting a bit blunt. And so they break the pencils. There we go. Just move the sharpenings away so I don't put my arm down in them. I shall have a bit of a clean up in a minute. Let's come back in so you can see what I'm doing. Oh, oh, that's as far as we're going to go. Okay, hang on. Cool. Sharpening's all over the place. <laughs> so I'm going to go around the edge of the leaf and you can see um, whether you think the colour sort of matches. I'm not going to press too hard because this can get quite dark, this one. 
and I don't really want it getting really really dark because we're trying to showcase the pastel colour really I want to make sure I do cover everything but there we go that's that leaf and I shall do that for the stem and all the leaves on this plant the same so that's that one so we've gone very squiff haven't we so that's that one shall we do let's do another one um this one's quite complex i feel but um i think we can let's just move some pencils aside let's let's put it straight and let's have a think so we have i'm thinking maybe a nice purple could be a good color for this so we have a pretty oops trying to get it out oh a pretty heather colour. There he is, she is, whatever you want to say. And I'm going to do that for these the petals. And like with the other one, I'm going to go over the whole thing and that bit with the heather colour to start with. And then we'll bring in, and this overlapping bit, and we'll bring in our darker colour in a minute. Perhaps I should have started with the centre, not sure. I think I'm going to go over that as well and we're going to put the a darker one in various places to sort of, um, yeah, do highlights and shadows and different things like that. So I had a lovely walk this morning, um, popped along the canal. We've got a um, community bookshelf, um, it's like a library and uh, you can just leave books there. So uh, I I had a load of books. The boys were making room on their bookshelf. So I popped some books on there. Unfortunately, the bookshelf had been moved and it was under a drip. It was under a bridge and the bridge was dripping. I don't know why it had been moved. It looked to me like it might have been painted, um, newly painted. But um, there were a few books on there and I put mine on a lower shelf where the drip couldn't reach. So And I had loads. So I hope... Um, hope someone goes along and finds them. Now I'm going to choose a darker purple. We'll go back in with this lighter purple after. You can see it's so pale you can barely see it at the minute but that's okay. Now this one's called Heather and it just feels right to go to Heather purple but that's quite dark. I think I'm going to do the purple lake if I can find it. Here he is. Oops. Oops. There we go. Purple lake. Oops. You can see it's not a really dark purple. And I'm going to go firstly on this top square, um, Johanna's marked here, that she wants us to do a darker colour. That's what I'm going to do to start with, like that, and just sort of blend it in. You can see how they just work together so well. I thought they would just because, I, as I say, I haven't tried it, but just because they felt the same and, you know, as if the cores are made of the same thing. Though I, to be honest, I find most brands are easy to work together. I used to always use Stedler and Prisma to, um, Stedler and Polychromos together, because those were the only two sets I had to start with, and I would use them all the time together. Um, if I wanted a really um, sort of tiny area, the Stedlers would sometimes be better to get to a sharp point, although Polys can be sharpened pretty well. So uh, I've always combined sets and I also then I bought some open stock greens in various brands to try out and I used to use those together with each other and with other sets I had and it always worked fine. So there you can see we've just, it's probably we've done, these are a little bit darker than these so I'm just going to do these a bit more, just bring that colour down a little bit more down the petal really. So on my jolly walk, I also saw a baby mandarin duck with its mummy. Oh, so cute. That was lovely. I saw it the other day. I think I told you um, when I was with my children. These, I'm going to put more darkness there. Okay, so we get a little bit that looks a bit shiny. I think it's quite fun. Um, so that was lovely because she only had one which was, uh, normally they have quite a few, don't they? But uh, it was nice to see them again, because you never know, there's pike in the canal, and they do like eating ducklings. I have walked along before and um, heard a mother duck indignantly squawk as a pike bit her. 
So uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a scary place that river. Now we've got the centre to do, and I'm while I'm talking about ducks, I am having a think about what to do. Actually, what we might do, excuse me, sniffing, is do the but do this one. So I'm going to grab the light colour again, the heather, and uh, do that first while I'm thinking. Oh, excuse me, I don't know what's going on with my voice. Thinking about what to do with the uh, with the rest. But uh, yeah, it was a lovely walk, and I saw um, saw some some people, a couple that uh, that my. My children went to primary school with their son. Primary school, for those of you who aren't from the UK, or aren't from England even, it can be different across the UK. Purple Lake, again, for, I'm going to do this edge. It's odd because it's got an edge. That one hasn't. I'm going to do the edge in this. Um, so, yeah, primary school is age 4 to 11, and then they changed schools, and uh, they went to different schools after that. So I uh, had a quick catch up with her and her husband and he's, uh, she said he was uh, looking at different universities and wants to be a biochemist. So that's interesting. But uh, we had a quick chat as we sort of walked. So I should have used my brush, not blown. Sometimes I forget. Okay, maybe I'm going to, I think I'll darken that a little bit more. You can just layer them up until they look right. It's quite nice to uh, press lightly and then think, because we're trying to go for this more pastel-y look. We don't want to press really hard. Okay, so I've got to do the centre of this one now. Um, I still haven't decided. <laughs> I think, hmm... An orangey yellow, I've decided. So I am going to grab this. This is called Almond Rose. And um, I'm going to do a light layer of this all over. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, sorry. I usually try and um, edit out my sneezing, but that was uh, came upon me rather suddenly. Now this is quite not such a delicate colour, so I think I might be able to get away with just layering up here, and it might be dark enough. But I might. I, we're trying. The whole point is to combine colours, so let's have a go. Um, what? What would match? Let's look on my swatch chart. We've got um, a marigold. I think that's going to work. I need to find it though. Where are you? Gosh, it's quite a dark one. But I think it it looked right on the swatch chart, so I'll have a go. So it's a sort of orangey, obviously, colour. But I think orange and purple always work well my son says they clash mum but I don't know I think they sort of set each other off somehow so we just put a little bit there and then some in the middle here with just a bit oh excuse me and then we've got the leaves we'll just do the ones on here um, those and all this will be the same and um, we've got these berries I'll think about those as well so all oh, the sun's coming through it's not going to reach us yet so we're okay oh excuse me so we'll choose a different color for our leaves what have we got we'll choose this one this is called cowslip it's a great name but cowslips are yellow so I'm a bit confused but we'll lay it down and see what it looks like now again, I think this is a greyish green. Maybe it's got a bit more yellow in it than the other one. It's quite similar to the um, to the other colour, but uh, I'll add a different green with it and uh, perk it up a bit. I think some pictures benefit from just being pastel, but uh, I think it's quite fun to show you how to combine them with other colours. 
So I am going to use mm, what's going to match. I'm thinking let's go for a permanent green. Um, I've just got to find it. Sorry. Um, my greens are split between two tins. Oops. Here we go. Here's our permanent green. You can see it's quite a darkish colour. But what I want to do is just put a bit in here and just spread that out a bit. So we've got the pastel tip and the darker centre. I think that's quite effective. And I will use this for the stem, just this colour, and do a similar um, thing with the leaves. I can show you actually. I think that is quite a nice warm... Oops, missed one. <laughs> getting carried away. It's got a nice warm colour and what I'm actually going to do is go back to the green, so remember the cowslip, and just go back over, overlap here a little bit, just mix it up a bit. Quite nice and smooth on the page. Good. There we go. I shall show you the stem. So just back to the permanent green. So the reason I've been having so many warts, so I'm just moving something out of my way so I can push the page up a bit, is that um, we've been having a bit of a sort out and I've got a lot of bits and bobs that need to uh, be got rid of basically um, so I have got I'm just going to keep this stem really plain um, so I had all some books but I had um, I sorted out my understairs cupboard and had lots of things there I'm going to show you um, one of these leaves um, just so you know what to do so again using the cowslip because this is the same plant um, I'm going to go over the whole leaf so yeah, we've been because of our kitchen renovations that we're having, we've had a bit of a sort out and got stuff to get rid of. So I um I'm back to our permanent green. Whoops, which I'm gonna do at the base, so you'll see. Um so I've got clothing to get rid of, which I will put in put in the clothing recycling bin in our local supermarket. There we go, that sort of warmed it up and back to the cowslip. I hope the camera's behaving because the sun is getting really bright and I'm just going to sort of blend it in really. I think that's rather pretty. So that's that one. So these little dots, they're quite small aren't they? What I think I'm going to do is use a really dark purple. Now in the in this set we don't have as dark purples as we do in the soft touch so I'm going to use the heather purple and I'm just going to make them really quite solid like that I think they look they stand out nicely like that with the purple and go with the flowers it's my thought anyway okay now how are we doing for time we've done quite a We've already done half now. What I'm going to do is leave it here. So I'm just zooming out to show you. Um, I'm going to um, finish off these two stems um, following exactly how I've shown you and then come back tomorrow and we'll do some of the others. I think that'll be nice. Um, I haven't had any thoughts about the background yet. So we'll see what happens there. <laughs> but as I say, I'm going to finish off this stem using the method I showed you with just the leaves. The leaves are the only thing left on here. This one again, leaves, finish those berries and those leaves. So I'm going to do that. And, uh, and then I will, uh, as I say, record again and, uh, and show you the next bit. And we'll do some other colours. Not sure what, we've got oranges, we've got sort of reds, things like that, purples, 
bit more blues of course so we'll have a play with some other combinations but I hope that was okay I had fun, I had fun and I was pleased with how well it worked <laughs> so that was good but thank you for watching enjoy your Monday and uh, happy colouring <laughs>